Hello and welcome to the first part of this mini restoration series where I'm going to be restoring this engine. Now it was manufactured in 1980 and it's a 3.5 horsepower Brooks & Stratton engine. Now you may notice that it's a cream colour rather than the usual 3.5 horsepower black colour. Um, so it's probably quite a rare one and as it's quite old um, I'm sure there's not so many about nowadays. But anyway it's come with a load of parts, there's a few bits in this tray here. You can see that it's got quite a bit of rust on it, and well, it looks like, looks like there's bits missing, but it's actually not. Um, I've actually got everything. So this is what it looks like, and this is the carburetor, and you can see that it's an old style one. The new ones don't look like that, and well, really, it just needs a good clean up and a service. So what we're going to do is remove the top cover of the engine and check everything inside and obviously rebuild everything which is missing from inside there. So when I lift the top off, you'll see that there is everything there which should be there, the coil and everything. Um, it's just the one thing which is missing, and that is the governor flap, which just goes on top of the coil there. You'll see there's a bolt missing, and that's where it bolts onto. So the first thing I do when I get an engine like this is I remove the sump, and the reason for this is to check for any wearing inside. There's no point doing all the work to it if I get it all running, and then find out that there is something severely worn inside. So basically when I do this, I just use a rubber mallet and that just gets the sump off because it's usually stuck on there with a gasket. And if you're very careful, you can actually get it off sometimes without damaging the gasket, although it's obviously recommended to replace the gasket for good practice. Um, and also the crankshaft, you'll see that there's quite a bit of rust on there and if you do not clean that off before you try and remove the sump, it will usually get stuck. But anyway, I was very impressed with this engine. Inside here, it was immaculate, it was fantastic. For the age, it was just amazing. Very impressed. It still had some oil in, um, which I will drain out and replace that as soon as possible. But there is nothing damaged in here. It's perfect. So I'm really pleased about that. So I'll just put this in the drain pan and get rid of that oil which was in there. Um, because this will need replacing. And when I inspected the oil afterwards, um, I didn't find any metal shavings at all. There was no dirt. It was perfect. So I don't really know what kind of a life this engine's had, but it's certainly been well maintained and serviced. Right, so you'll see how it just needs a clean. It doesn't really need respraying too badly on the crankshaft and sump. It just needs a good wash, because most of this is just ingrained dirt. You'll also notice an old gasket there. That gasket is what someone else has put in and that is obviously not the right gasket for the engine because there is a tab sticking outside. But it does the job so might as well keep it on. And the spark plug is new, not put in by me. The previous owner must have put it in. It was only finger tight but there is no carbon deposits on it so I don't think it's been run and also it's quite hard to see but if you look in there you might just about see the piston and someone's obviously had the head off and they've cleaned all the carbon off the piston because it's totally clean as well. So someone has definitely been working on this engine. Um, I think it's an unfinished project really, but you can see the piston there. Right, so this is everything else which isn't actually attached to it. The fuel tank, carburetor, the front control arm, a few bits and bobs. And this is of course the carburetor. It's the old style and it's still got that screw on the side with a choke and throttle. So yeah, it just needs a good clean. I'm going to take this apart though and clean it all out just to make sure that it's all clean in there because as I say, I don't know what the previous owner's done to it. So that's what it looks like at the moment and I'm going to get all this cleaned out as soon as possible. Fuel tank inside looks pretty good as well, there's no dirt in there so that's been well maintained. And the cover, you'll see there's a lot of surface rust. What I'm going to do with that is just sand it down and then respray it in the correct colour and obviously cover up the sticker so we don't damage that with the new paint. And these are the other bits as well. Air filter which I replace and respray the air filter outer housing. And there are a few bits and bobs including the governor flap and the control arm and a guard on the side of the engine. So that's where we stand with it at the moment. And the first thing we're going to do is actually rebuild and clean the carburetor just to make sure that that's all there because 
if the carburetor's not up to it, then there's not a lot of point in carrying on um, until I find a new one. So first things first, I'm going to remove the carburetor off the fuel tank and to make sure it's all fully functional in here. So of course I need to check whether the diaphragm is still usable. If it's not, then I'll have to get a new one. And also you need to check that the spring is in place and that the pickup tubes are clean. You can see here that this is of course the fuel tank, which I'm going to clean and just quickly giving it a wipe off before I do clean it properly. Um, and you'll see where the surface is, where the carburetor attaches to. That needs to be clean and all of the grooves and all the places where the springs go into need to be cleaned as well. So I'm now just removing this cover and this is actually the cover for a small metal lever which attaches to the choke on the carburetor and it just pulls out, you can pull it out and then it comes through the bottom and comes out with the spring and diaphragm. And the reason I'm taking this off is to clean inside and also so I can actually take the diaphragm off and clean everything properly without damaging the diaphragm. Like I say, if it's damaged I'm going to replace it anyway but I'm going to try my best to keep this one. And I'm also going to remove all the other gaskets which are on the carburetor because when I'm going to clean it I don't want to damage them further and with the carburetor cleaner which I'm going to use I don't want to perish or disintegrate these gaskets. You can see there's a lot of dirt in there and it definitely needs a good clean. The previous owner clearly didn't get to the stage of actually cleaning the carburetor thoroughly. So it's going to need a good clean but they did actually take the carburetor off previously. Um, it was clear because the diaphragm wasn't stuck and also uh, the bolts were not tight and also one of the bolts or screws are actually missing. So that's the carburetor gasket cleaned and this is the whole fuel tank and carburetor now fully cleaned. I didn't show the cleaning process but I just used carb cleaner and completely flushed the whole system through. So now everything is drying off in the sun and I can start to rebuild the carburetor again. So that's the gasket going on, that's for the air filter. That just sits on the top there and just push it down with my thumbs. Make sure it's on there tight and then we can go and put the diaphragm on. And you've got to be careful when doing this, you've got to make sure that you slot the piece of metal through first and then over the two pickup tubes and then push it through and then you'll be able to latch the metal rod onto the choke again. And be careful that you don't damage the plastic when doing that. So we just make sure the gasket's on correctly, the diaphragm's on correctly and then you can put the cover back on. So that's all done now and I can now put that back onto the fuel tank. Make sure you align the diaphragm correctly and then you can put the screws back in and I would say tighten them all evenly. You should do anyway but unfortunately the previous owner has lost one of my screws so I haven't actually got them all so it's going to be very hard to actually tighten them all down evenly. But try your best to and you should have all of yours, there shouldn't be any lost anyway. So I tighten diagonally, that's the best way I find. Right, so with some white spirit which I had left over, I'm just going to wash the side of the crankcase and sump. Um, I find this is a very good degreaser for engines, it actually takes it off very well. And I just brush it over there and get it all the main grease and dirt off. And then once I've brushed it all with the white spirit, I can then go over it with a rag or some workshop towel or something like that and just wipe off the excess and it actually leaves a really good finish. If you haven't got white spirit you can use degreaser, you can use soapy water, it's up to you. It all does a very good job and it just makes it a lot, a lot cleaner. So that's the way I clean them. Um, and now taking the muffler off, I'm just going to take it off for now. Um, when I respray it, because I'm going to respray it in the silver heat proof paint and also so I can clean behind it the breather cover for the valves it's actually behind here and the is usually quite a lot of debris building up behind here so I like to clean behind there as well basically just giving it a really good clean ready for when I give it a test run
So that's where the engine stands now for this part. I hope to see you in part two of this mini restoration series. See you then.